I know you want to be a cloud expert and you want to learn all the cloud services so that you can use any cloud platform. But throughout the journey of becoming a cloud expert, you miss a very foundational step where you also need to focus on the non-cloud technology tools which are really essential and plays a significant role to become a cloud expert. And today we are going to talk about these six specific non-cloud technologies and tool which you should master in parallel when you are also mastering your cloud services. The first tool which I also call it as a backbone of any computing is the code. So you should be able to write some code, you should be able to compile some code and you should be able to finally run the code. Now the next question comes which programming language you should focus. So as a DevOps or as a cloud expert or as a SRE, I would recommend you to go with the Python, but it is not uh, like a written rule that you should know Python. You can just start working with any programming language, whether it can be Java, Golang, React. So just start learning uh, those languages if you feel comfortable working with. The key thing which you need to keep in mind that whenever you're learning any programming language, then you should be able to read the documentation of that programming language and you should be able to write the code using that documentation. Because nowadays, the languages and the features are coming quite fast and you need to be quite updated with those changes. So I would highly recommend that you should be able to write some code using the documentation. Then it doesn't matter that you uh, either focus on learning Python, Java, Golang or React or Node.js. So just try to practice this and uh, try to write some code using the language which you feel comfortable. All right, since we are talking about the code, the second component in the code is which is really important is the versioning because with the help of versioning which you can see over here you can do the collaboration with other team member and why the versioning is important if suppose you are doing some changes onto your code and if something goes wrong then you can still have your older version so that you can roll back to the older version of a code and you can keep your services up and running. Then the next question comes like how will you enable the versioning and for that there is a github which is a quite industry widely used uh, tool for doing the versioning so you should master some basic command of github which is like uh, git push git pull raising a pull request doing the code review and finally merging your pull request so that you can release uh, your code to the production environment and finally, but not the least, is the editors. So what kind of editor you should use? So there are quite a few uh, like open source and free tools which are available for you to write the code. And those are like a Notepad++, Sublime, and the most popular one is the Visual Studio Code. So these are some free tools which are available or the editors which are available, which you can start using it for writing the code and also that has a really good integration with the versioning system, especially the Visual Studio Code. So you can integrate your GitHub action or Git repository with your editor, which is I'm telling you the Visual Studio Code and you should be able to work with your code with the proper version. Next in the list is the scripting. So whenever you're working with either on-prem or on cloud so scripting is something it's like a swiss knife for a cloud expert so you should master the scripting but how would you master the scripting so there are two ways you can master the scripting so one is the bash scripting which is like it will work all the time because most of the time or 99 percent of the time we work on the linux machines and to work with the Linux machine, you need to know the bash scripting for troubleshooting, doing some automation, writing some utility scripts. So bash is the go-to tool for writing the automation or scripting. The second one is the Python. So uh, bash script is really important because if there is nothing is over there, then bash scripting is always there. But Python is also quite good for writing your utility script and providing some kind of automation. So 
try to learn the python in parallel also so that you can not only use the bash but you can combine bash along with the python to make it more powerful so these are the two tools which i would highly recommend for writing down any kind of a scripting which will definitely help you to learn the cloud services and troubleshoot the cloud services in a quick and effective time the third in the list i'm talking about is the ci cd which stands for continuous integration and continuous delivery writing the code is not sufficient enough you need to continuously integrate and continuously deliver your code to the production environment and what are the tools which will enable you for doing the continuous integration and continuous delivery so the quite popular tool over here is the jenkins which is like an open source tool uh, which has been used in the industry for a really long time apart from that there is a github action from github there is a git labs also and there is a ergo cd also but these are not only the ci cd tools but there are other tools in the market as well but these are the quite a few which are quite popular and quite widely used in the industry so you should learn these tools also because without ci cd tool you will not be able to deliver anything onto the cloud i'm not saying that you will be blocked but this will not make your automation your continuous delivery fast when you are not learning these kind of a tool so if you are wondering like which tool i should start out of these uh, tools which i have just mentioned so i would highly recommend to start with the jenkins uh, which is a like an open source tool which you can install even if you don't have any cloud account so you can practice the jenkins onto your local system as well I have already uploaded a project onto my YouTube channel where you can take a look like how I have set up the Jenkins, how I have installed the Jenkins and how I have created the delivery pipeline so that once I commit the code, then I can in execute that delivery pipeline in the Jenkins. I'll put the link into the description section. So please go and check that particular project. The fourth in the list I'm talking about is the automation. So now we have talked about the versioning, we have talked about the continuous integration and delivery. Now let's talk about the automation. Of course, you don't want to do the manual thing, manual releases onto your production or test environment. And for that, you need some kind of a automation. So what are the tools you should master for achieving the automation? And the most popular tool in the industry uh, whether you're doing a DevOps, SRE or cloud expert is Ansible. So you should learn the Ansible to write some utility automation, which is really fast and really ease your automation workflow. There is a whole dedicated course which I have already uploaded uh, if you want to learn the Ansible from the scratch. So just follow that particular course. I'll also post that link into the description section so that you can just go there and play around with the Ansible. And the good thing about the Ansible is it's absolutely free. You don't need to pay anything. You can just go there, simply install onto your system and then you can start writing your utility Ansible automation. So that's, a, uh, that's about the Ansible. The second thing is Bash. So as I already told you, if nothing is there, Bash will always be there for you. But writing a Bash script will require a little bit of practice and writing a long Bash script can be troublesome. So that's why I always prefer to go with the Ansible. But in case if you don't have an Ansible, then you have a Bash. So you just you can achieve the same thing using the Bash as well. But writing a Bash scripting is a bit tedious and sometimes it becomes a overwhelming for a new person. But try to focus on Ansible because if if you are working on DevOps, SRE or a cloud expert, then of course Ansible will always be there for you to work with. The fifth in the list, which I call it as a IAC, which stands for infra as code. So what does it mean? So when you are working on a cloud, then you need to provision certain services on a cloud. So you need to start some resources. So of course, cloud provides you a GUI where you can go and start those services. But in ideal, in the industry, you don't use the UI for provisioning or creating the services. You write the code to start any services. And for that, there are quite a few tools which are really popular. One is Terraform and one is Pulumi. 
So Terraform uh, is a quite popular tool where you can write your Terraform configuration so that you can start any services and also you can destroy that particular services. So try to master the Terraform as well. You don't need to be an expert on Terraform. Uh, you can just know that how you can write a terraform configuration because uh, nowadays also i still refer to the terraform documentation when i when i'm struggling to create any re new resource on any cloud services also there is a whole complete terraform course on the channel that is also from the beginner zero to the expert level which you can follow and you can get yourself familiar with the terraform the second tool which is like uh, this Pulumi, this Pulumi is also quite good tool which also provides you a flexibility of writing the infrastructure as a code. So try to pick uh, the tool which is like used in your company or in your project. If it is Terraform, in most of the cases people are using Terraform and in some of the cases people are also using Pulumi. So just try to use those tools and try to master those tools so that you know like how the infrastructure as a code works. And last but not the least, and this is one of my favorite topic is the networking and the security. So if you don't know the networking concept really well, then you will definitely going to struggle in the DevOps SRE or cloud speciality rules. So when I'm talking about the networking, then you should know like what is VPC, virtual private data centers, subnet, CIDR. Also, you should know the load balancers, proxy, uh, reverse proxy, DNS, and also the SSL certificate, SSH key. So these are the some quite a few concept which you should know when you are trying to learn any cloud services because these concepts are still the same if you are working on on-premise if you have read these topics in your college then these concepts are still gonna be valid if you are working on any cloud services so if you want to know more about these topics, then please put down into the comment section i can prepare a dedicated video on each topic of these networking but just for your own safety try to learn this concept try to understand this concept because if you understand this concept like all related to networking and security then you will be able to understand those cloud services quite quickly and you should be able to master those services quite fast let me know out of those six topic which one would you like to see more in-depth session and if you are interested in learning the cloud and devops then there is a youtube membership program which i'm also running so there you will find a more in-depth session where i'm using the terraform uh, aws services along with the jenkins and ansible to create some project so try to join that membership program and you will see a quite a lot of these concept uh, how we are using it in a real time and also let me know if you want to know more about any specific topic then put down into the description section so till then take care and bye bye